Welcome back. It's been a few days. Sorry about that. Caution the quarantine 2.0 begins. Couldn't quite be helped though, guys. We, um, as it's you can see wild. from the background, it's not quite the same white wall as we've been used to seeing the last few days. Last few um, weeks. Last few shall weeks. We, shall we rephrase that? So basically, it all happened very quickly, and we got like a, a message at like nine or half no, eight last late. night. It, it, you need to even reverse from there a couple of people commented on our channel on mon on tuesday um tuesday i think it was like the 24th what day is it today 26th yeah tuesday 24th of march we got a couple of comments saying guys department of tourism are doing a flight from elo elo it's a rescue flight check it out put your details forward um at the same time them comments were being dropped, I'd actually just joined a Facebook group for people who were stranded in the country to just kind of get an idea about what the embassies were doing. While this is going on, we're being told that the UK are considering closing their airports until at least May. Um, we weren't due to fly back to England until after that date, but let's say that date was extended, we would have missed our flight back to the UK. We would have spent all of our travel money keeping ourselves in the Philippines until then. And then we wouldn't have had any money to book a flight home and we really would have been stranded. So that was all going on at the same time. The UK are making these decisions. Elo Elo has got a flight going. We need to get in touch with the Department of Tourism. And it just was chaos really quickly. Um, we didn't even know that there was, there was a flight. We, we had no idea. It was just two or three comments on here from a couple of people and then one one lady called jet and honestly we owe this woman everything because if it wasn't for her we wouldn't be here right now um this lady lives in manchester with her husband she's filipino i think she's from Ilo Ilo. they've got a baby who's seven months old they were booked onto that that flight um she contacted me through the facebook group and said I've, I've realised that you're in Ilo Ilo from what you've said. Phone this number and get yourself on the flight. Hello, Hello. Hello. hi. Hello, um, hi. I've just been given your number um, to call because somebody has told me that there is a flight leaving Ilo Ilo tomorrow to Manila. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. It is. How much is the flight? Ma'am? How much is the flight per person? For Manila? Yeah. Uh, they, they, they will pay the amount of the airplane. So we don't have to pay to get to Manila? Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, do we have to um, prove a onward flight when we board the plane to get to Manila or do we have to have a proof of booking when we arrive in Manila? Um, um, would it be um, best if I call from my hotel reception and ask them to speak with you? Oh yes ma'am. Okay, I'll do that now. Thank you very much. Welcome. The hotel spoke to the Department of Tourism in the forest, didn't they? Um, yeah. So, it was all like very last minute. We thought we could get on the flight. Then it turns out we didn't get the confirmation because I think it was already um, it fully, was fully, booked. fully booked. So in the end, we gave up. We just left it at that and thought, oh, oh well, never mind, sort of thing. And then the lady Jet, she decided that she didn't want to go to uh, the flat to Manila because she thought that maybe because she had a, a young baby, she thought maybe it's a, a bit, bit, a bit risky. So she said, no, nah, we'll just stay in Ilo Ilo. So. We she thought, then okay. called Department of Tourism. But she's then like harassed the Department of Tourism to get us on the flight in her place because yeah. she had two spots. We are, we're two. And she I think we only changed. got on that flight because of her ringing up the Department of Tourism, basically. She did send me a message saying they said that they can't change it because the cutoff time is 9pm. The information's already been sent over now. The flight's already confirmed. And I think that she 
she was like, I'll leave it with me, leave it with me. And then she came back to me at 8.45 and said, Cody, can you get in touch with the Department of Tourism? I think that they'll, they, they'll consider changing your name. Literally within 10 minutes, Department of Tourism called me and said, do you still want to be on tomorrow's sweeper flight? 5 to 9 p.m. And we said, yes. And they said, send us your passport name and, and number then. So we did. And then it took an hour for the confirmation to come through again, didn't it? So mm. by 10 p.m., we still hadn't received a confirmation email to say that we were on the flight. And they said that we can only get the flight if we have the email. So still by 10 p.m., we were like, right, we're not on this flight. We'd accepted it. We were like, we tried. We, we really did try mm. our best. We knew that Jet had tried her best. And and we were happy with that because we had, we did, what else can you do other than try? Mm. And then again within five minutes everything just got flipped on its head because then we got the confirmation email and we were like right okay now we need to look for a flight out of manila because you can only go to manila if you've got a flight to london so now we need to look for a flight and that is when everything mm. just went from bad to horrific it was bad i like there honestly there's, there's no there's no words because like Unless you're in the situation, you can only comprehend like the emotions that come with that type of like scenario playing out. We're, we're in a group chat with people saying that we're in Manila Airport right now, but Someone our flights like, have been cancelled. We've been here for like three days. Seven four, nights. Oh, it was just like, wow. So we was like doing our research at like what airlines have a realistic chance of not being cancelled basically. And uh, there was, a, I think there was between two, right? So it was Gulf Air was, had flights, and then it was Qatar. And I was looking at the Qatar the day before and seeing if the flights were leaving or not. And I think one flight had left, I think one got cancelled. Two got cancelled, yeah. And I think uh, Gulf Air didn't really fill me with joy either. So I was looking through the, uh, all the like, notifications on Qatar, decided that that would be our best uh, risk the highest probability of pulling it off right but it was still it was still below 50 percent right? i still wasn't sure we, we was going to get on this back flight and forward to each other way we? so in the end i think it was like three o'clock in the morning and i was trying to go through with booking these flights so um we had, cards. we had problems i think one bank card got blocked um don't know why then we tried on cody's card and they wanted a verification, which I couldn't confirm because my English mm. SIM didn't have credit on it. So then I couldn't text my bank to say, it's me trying to make this transaction. So, so that, didn't that go got cancelled. And then last ditch effort, I tried my bank, one of my other bank cards from home. I just had a picture of it on my phone, luckily. So I, I ended up paying it with that. And then when I went to literally press the pay button, it added like an extra £500 on it, which is like, how much is £500? It'd be like... 7, 14, 21, 28. About 33,000 peso-ish. Just just to use that card. It wasn't for anything else. The flight was already 3,000 English pounds. Then they wanted to add another 500 English pounds on top just to book it. That was it. It was crazy, right? So I was like, I'm not paying that. Right. But we were like, no, that's it. We're going to bed. We're not doing it. We tried everything. I'm not paying an extra 500. It's 3,000 already. Like, tensions were so high. I was it was so four o'clock in the morning. We were so, oh, so angry. We felt awful because then we thought, oh my God, Jet said to us, good luck getting home. Let me know when you land in the UK safe. Then I'm thinking, oh my God, this woman just gave up her two seats for us and now like, we're not even going and we're wasting the two seats that she fought for us to have and it was just, it was, not good, it was horrific. It, was not it good. really was Because you're, you're, you're in a rush. You, you ain't got a lot of time to get these flights booked and then you've got, a, everyone's getting cancelled flights, right? So you've got to try and avoid the cancellations. There's people there that had like three and four cancellations at like a thousand pounds per flight. So it's like four thousand pounds wasted. So, and you're sleeping in the airport on the floor because you're not allowed out of Manila Airport yeah. when you get there. So not only was it a risk of having your flight cancelled, but if we leave Ilo Ilo, that's it. There's no coming back. Can't come back we're yeah. comfortable there. We've got a nice place. We told you guys, like, that's it. We're going to stay. And then next minute, the UK is closing their airport. So we're thinking... So it could be the last chance to leave before... I mean, we don't know how long this is going to take 
It could so, be like September. Uh, it could be a while. So, anyways, we went to bed. I was I was pissed. Putting it mildly, I was pissed. So I sat there on my phone, huffing and puffing, back on the app to see if it if it was gonna overcharge me by so much again. And then uh, Email. I think I pressed like a different a different um, payment method or something. I don't know what I did. And it was the actual normal price, right? So I thought, oh, okay. So I just pressed next to see if it would add the fee on. And as I pressed next, it's actually started like processing, like the actual payment. So I've pressed the cancel button, like the, like the back button, thinking, oh, that's all right, I'll just cancel it. And then I checked my phone and I was like, shit, I think I've actually like booked the flights, but it was for the 3,000 pounds, right? Which is what Minus I was willing to Minus the 500 pay. that they'd already tried to charge, but. But we was already willing to pay that. So I thought, well, oh shit. By willing it I was. Think, I think I've like paid for this by accident. I checked my bank, the money had come out. I thought, okay, check my emails, nothing. So the I'm email thinking, said, continue your booking. Like, as in, like, do you still want to go ahead with yeah. this? It, it, was, it was worded in a way that made it look like, oh, you've been interested in this flight, but you haven't completed it. Would yeah. you like to? And we were like, well, hang on a minute. The, the flight, the, the money The just come gone. out of my bank, right? So we ended up, yeah like getting up again this is like half three four o'clock now so we're on the phone to the our, our bank in england <laughs> and um they're trying to sort it out and as i'm on the phone i get a verification email come through from qatar 40 minutes after the money had been taken so this is like half four twenty to five by this point in the morning we if we're making this the rescue flight we had to be up at half six in the morning to get to get to the airport so it's half four, five o'clock, and we still haven't got a flight from Manila yet. So, so anyways, after like a little bit of like messing around and stuff, I think it took like half an hour to get the confirmation, right? So I get the confirmation email, and everything's sweet. Everything's like, all right, okay, sweet, no problem. And then the the next morning, like I think we had two hours sleep. We we wake up, get all our stuff together, get downstairs for the hotel, and then the lady behind the behind the thing says, uh, "Oh, have you got your health?" checkup oh i forgot about that <gasps> what health checkup no one told us about a health checkup health certificate she went yeah you've got a, you have to get one um to get through the checkpoints because um, now we've paid the three thousand pounds for the flights like, and we got we got an email saying that if you want to get to the airport um because there's no public transport no buses or anything like that they're putting a shuttle on from Mandorial, which obviously we were in city proper so it's not exactly right beside each other we still had to get from our hotel to Mandorial, um and we were like oh we're not going to make it we'll just get a taxi now we've got the health certificate problem and we're already later than the shuttles left because we were planning on just getting a taxi directly there she's like oh yeah there's there's so many checkpoints how many is so many oh yeah no there's there's a lot of checkpoints between the hotel and the airport it's going to take you at least an hour and a half to get there so we're thinking what? oh i'm i'm thinking we're not going to make this like we quite possibly just wasted like three thousand pound and uh we get in we get in the private car from the hotel guy drives us and then we see one checkpoint and all like the i think they're police or the army they're like under the gazebo right like under the shade they so they're not the they're not in the road and all we had was a an email from department of tourism and they said just show them this email and you should be able to get through it wasn't guaranteed they said you've got to try it though because you can't get a, you can't get a health certificate now because it doesn't open until nine we needed to already be at the airport before nine so there was no way that we were going to get it but how else were we going to get it because we didn't get the confirmation email from t till 10 p.m so we couldn't have got it last night either Chest is tight, we have nervous bellies, and we just have no idea what's going to happen at this point. At this point, we've got to dodge the roadblocks, we've got to um, make it on time, get to the airport and get checked in and on the flight without our health cards or health checkups, whatever you want to call it. Then I thought, then we've got to try and dodge the cancellations in Manila because it was crazy. So that's like three massive ifs, right? The anxiety, like this was our heart. This was our heart. It was not an enjoyable experience. <sighs> so anyways, we get through the checkpoint because no one was on the checkpoint. They was sitting under the shade, right? So we thought, oh, okay, maybe another three or four more checkpoints. 
There was one checkpoint after that, which was at the airport. At the airport, yeah. And the guy had just said, "Oh, show me your your uh, flight confirmation." So we showed him that straight straight through. I see the, all all the Department of Tourism people there at the airport. I said, "We haven't got no like health card, health checkup. Can we still fly?" He went, "Yeah, don't worry about it." I thought, "Oh." Wow. We were like, what? right, we've been Don't looking here. It. That's what? it. Oh my god, this is a good start. We're like, this is it. We're gonna, we're gonna go home. We're getting home, and it instantly like brought us back to our like positivity, didn't it? Like that was the first. That was the biggest hurdle. That, that was we the got first over. hurdle. So we were like, right, and we know that we've got many more hurdles because we've got to get now from Elo Elo to London via Doha. Via Manila. Manila was the biggest risk Jeez. because Manila was just cancelling flight after flight after flight after flight. So we're in the queue for um, the the Cebu Pacific flight. Now, I just want to add at this point that the Cebu Pacific flight from Ilo Ilo to Manila was free of charge, paid for by the Department of Tourism, which is something we did not expect because every other rescue flight from the country that we've seen so far has cost between 177 English pounds and 200 English pounds. I think that might be so, ju like just in Ilo Ilo, right? So I think the Ilo Ilo branch of Department of Tourism, I think, or the mayor, they must have they covered that the bill. bill. Yeah, they so, because everywhere else is charging, right? So, Ilo Ilo actually got us all out f for all on them, if you like, for free. So that was like, I haven't heard of anyone having free um, flights. Rescue like, flights, yeah. So that was like, wow, okay. So Ilo Ilo is like repping, helping all the tourists big time, right? And then um, we get to the airport, we check in. That that was all fine. Except for the fact that our baggage was over, so then we had to pay extra for our luggage because we were we were coming. No, of not we. Over. You, you was over. So Cody had to pay five hundred pesos because she put too much junk in the bags. There's junk in the bags because our condo isn't finished and we couldn't yeah, leave true, it there. Good. Otherwise, we would that's never true. have brought any of that that's stuff true. home. Like, I'll give it The, the plan I'll, I'll was to that. leave the stuff in the house so that we could come back with empty bags, but that unfortunately hasn't happened. That's a different story. Absolute ghost town so we've checked our bags in with super pacific 20 kg per person we were 2 kg over we've got a little rescue flight just arrived empty 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 we are out of here only to manila though let's not get our hopes up So we land in Manila, um, get on the, sh the free shuttle to, I think it was Terminal 3, get into Terminal 3 and it was... Ghost Town. Ghost Town. There was, there was probably... Ghost Well, there, there, so as of, what, what day is it, 20, 26 today? It's 26, so like we have... Uh... As of today, there is like only four airlines, or four flights out of Manila. So you can still... Not airlines. Yeah, it's four different. Uh, uh, it's not airlines. It's five or four or three airlines, but there's four flights out. Two are on Qatar, I know that much. I think one was ANA or ANA Airlines. Um, I'm not sure what the other ones were. But um, we got there, had to wait about an hour for the Qatar airline to get the check in desk to come on. So we've gone up to the check in desk. There's all, everyone ahead of us is like all smiling and happy, I'm thinking. They, this must, is good. This is they good. must know something we don't, right? But while we're waiting to check in, we're in this WhatsApp group, remember? So we've got, it's kind of like Viber, but it's not Viber. It's what we use in England. It's a little bit different. So we've got a group of 200 stranded tourists across the country. People are in Cebu, Siaga, Sigi Hall, Palawan, they're everywhere. only British, though. They're only the Brits. So there's way and more. And there's people in there that have been in, in Manila Airport for four or five days. And they're like, I'm not booking another flight. And I was like, we've got to be positive, guys. We've got to have positive mental attitude. Filipinos have taught us one thing, it's to be resilient. We're going to make this fight. It's going to leave today. And like me and Chris were the only ones who were like, don't talk bad news around us. No negative vibes. Like we were really like trying to be positive. And everyone in front of us seemed to be walking away from the check-in desk with a smile on their face. But we're reading all of the 
inform um, the messages in the chat and everyone's saying my flight's just been cancelled, my flight's mm. just been cancelled. So we've got the most nervous bellies you can imagine. But everyone's got a smile on their face in front of us and we're thinking, you just can't call it. But we'll hang on to hope. Hmm. And we asked at the desk, didn't we, when we got to the front of the, of the check-in. We said, is this flight definitely going? They went, yes, it's going. 100%, we're leaving today. It's we were going. like, hallelujah. If you've ever been to Manila Airport, you know that this is not something that you're ever going to see ever again. We have the whole airport to ourselves. There's only four flights flying today, scheduled anyway. We just said to the woman at check-in, we were like, okay, is this flight definitely going ahead? She said yes. Yes, it is. It's definitely leaving Manila. Yes, we can definitely transit. I said because our viewers will bash you on the vlog. She said yes. I'm In all seriousness, though, it's been a very, very stressful 24 hours. So things are looking good right now. Not definite, but they're looking good. So. We're just gonna have to play it by every hour. And see minute by minute. Minute by minute. Sit by sit. Sit by sit. For me. Cake by cake. Mm. <laughs> so that was just and then game like, changer. Cody's said that in in this group chat with all the stranded British tourists, and then I think like four about or five four or five booked just because of that as well. So we helped like four or five more guys to get on the same flight, and. Uh, to be fair, it was the smoothest experience of life, to be honest. We heard so many bad stories, like terrible stories about people spending three and four thousand for one person. We had to spend three thousand for two. Yeah. And then we only, so we've got on the, on the flight, we've, we've taken off, thought we made it. Well, we did make it. We did make it. We got on it, we checked in. Flight la left on time from Manila. Mm, it was good. It was on good. the route to Doha, and I have to be honest and say, flight was I don't even want to talk about the price but the service on on Qatar Airlines when you're on that plane was the best that we've ever experienced like yeah, on, they, a, on a flight they are, a good they, airline. they are really really good airline as far as service face to face is concerned because we've heard some horror stories but more importantly the flight from Manila to Doha had a capacity of 67 people out of like 300 plus yeah, so it was so, 388 people were able to actually be on board and they were only they only had 68 people including the both of us on that on that plane. We had the whole plane to ourselves. It was empty. It was I think huge. we had like the back section and you can probably have like 60 70 people in there, there 17. maybe. There were 17 people. So everyone was all like lying on four seats to go go and sleep and stuff. So the re so if you're watching this video thinking right, they got the Qatar flight, let's get the Qatar flight. They're expensive now. But they're expensive because there's not enough people booking, so they've got to basically they've got to Justify. earn enough for it to be worthwhile to fly, right? So the flats are going to be expensive, but them that plane out is so empty, like it's so bad really because they could easily lower the price. But I don't know, I don't know why if buts maybe is, but that flight is empty. But if you can make it out of Manila you will get home because Doha yeah. is like business as, well, you, as usual. It literally, you land in Doha and like, you know, people are walking around, like there's a lot of shops closed, like convenience shops, all of the like <clears throat> duty frees were open and there's a couple of like food places which were extortionate prices, but they like were there. It was like a normal airport, open, everything. So it didn't even seem like there was any issues there. Our connecting <coughs> flight from Doha to, to London, <clears throat> we, we were literally sat on a metal chair in front of the the computer, uh, what's it called? The, like the display board. The flight thing. display board. We were sat on a metal chair in front of that for nine hours. Our, our flight, our, lay, our layover was nine hours. And we just sat there checking it, checking it, checking it to make sure because the Wi Fi was terrible. We couldn't check it on our phone. Mm. So we were sat in front of that, that board all night. We landed at like, what, 11 o'clock at night and our flight wasn't until 8, eight o'clock the next morning. So f f literally for up them nine hours, we sat day. there in front of that board with our eyes falling out our sockets, just waiting and waiting. And then um, I think there was like a little five, 10 minute delay on getting on the actual plane, mm. which made us a bit nervous. 
Um, but the mm -hmm. amount of people that was on the flight from Doha to, to the UK was unbelievable. There was no, I don't <coughs> think there was one spare seat. Touchdown in Doha. And uh, as far as we've seen, the flight is still scheduled to go ahead. This is how Chris feels about the situation. It's 10 to 3 in the morning. I'm struggling. I feel agitated, I'm tired, I feel dizzy, I'm cold. I haven't slept for about You are a pain in the days. neck is what you are. Pain in the arse. Did you not hear that? My first descriptive word of how I was feeling was agitated. I will punch you. Goodbye, Zoa. If you can get to Doha, you're, you're, going, home. you're going home, pretty much. Um, it was all fine other than that but as we're in the airport waiting we're still reading everyone else's like bad stories that they're stuck in Cebu 500 people that like, the streets are packed full of people trying to get in the airport there's no flights it's only one sweeper flight between like 500 500 people that like, I don't know our gratitude went yeah. through the roof we yeah, see it, at, at the end of the day although we booked the flight we would never have been able to book the flight from Manila to England if it wasn't for Jet giving up her seats for us. And she got us home. She did. Like her and her husband agreeing to take the names off and put ours on instead. That that's what got us home. And with all of the concerns that we had throughout, you you've seen yourself. It's been an emotional roller coaster. <clears throat> like one video, we're like, oh yeah, it's a boring day. Like you know, we're just doing this, getting by. The next day, we're like, right, we're in a good mood today. Like spirits are up. And the next day, like I was crying, and then someone cheered us up. So then spirits went right up, and like your it's emotions just are just like it's this, just and it's crazy. really hard to deal with, not knowing how you're gonna feel tomorrow, knowing that you're not nothing's gonna change in your circumstances. You don't know what to expect. It, when is this gonna end? Like there's no certainty, and we know that it's important. It's really crucial for the country and the like, the people and the health and the economy for this virus to not like yeah, become yeah. rife yeah. within the philippines but to ha if we had our house this would never have been an issue we would have stayed because we wouldn't have been having to pay 20 odd pounds a night to stay in a hotel we don't have our house yet so the issue is if Expensive. we can't get home if our flight's cancelled because the <clears throat> uk closed their airports the money that we would use on a flight would be getting used on a hotel until the borders open again and then who knows if we'll have the money to book a flight so then what it's just been it's the like most it. stressful yeah. emotional draining scary nerve-wracking excited like every emotion you can feel about this ha we've we've been through it in the last 32 hours haven't we i still haven't slept yet we haven't slept since monday See, night my was eyes the last... are a little bit a little bit of clothes they're like <laughs> They, they need sleep for sure. Monday night was the last actual night sleep that we had because Tuesday we had two hours because we had the flight on Wednesday morning from Ilo Ilo and then since Ilo Ilo he's napped on the plane. I haven't slept one wink. And right now it's Thursday, 26th of March and it's quarter past five which means that it's actually six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One in the morning on Friday, and we haven't been to bed since Monday. <laughs> so, it, like, we're really sorry that we haven't been around for the last couple of days, but now you you know why. Um, I think after this vlog goes up, we even though we're back in England, we're still gonna do the daily vlogs because I'll be looking at what's going on in the Philippines anyway. And we're still going to be in quarantine because now yeah. Chris's mum um, can't stay in the house um, while we're <laughs> home because we've come through four airports and the London Underground, which is rife for germs on an everyday basis, never mind while coronavirus is doing the rounds. So she can't stay here. So we're home alone. Um, Self-isolation, 14 days. My mum so... knows that we're back now because we didn't tell anyone we were coming home but in case we got stuck in the Middle East somewhere and just like, it's just honestly, you can't write it. Um, and we were literally discussing, we came over this year, we 
instantly first thing we done sorted out tell family stuff we went and done that straight away it was really important to us we went and done that straight away and then it just seems like from there that was like the highlight and then from there it was just like bad like bad luck after bad yeah. luck after bad luck after bad luck after bad luck and then i feel like we went to see the house that brought us back up and then like to be honest with you the people that we've met because this virus and what's gone on has literally been what's kept us going through all of this. Everyone who's like come in and dropped us messages and dropped us food and offered to get us stuff and like that is what's kept us going because honestly, this last sad. two weeks been hard, it was, hasn't it? It? It, was, it, was, it was sad, man. It was sad. But I think um, going forward, we're going to carry on with the dailies yeah. because we're going to be in quarantine anyway and... Any updates uh, that happen in the Philippines, we'll be, we'll be finding them anyway. So we can just still let you know as as each day goes. And there's still like thousands of stranded tourists uh, in the Philippines as yeah, well. Yeah, we're so. gonna try and spread some um, awareness about that. Um, yeah. You know, like the as far as I'm concerned, the the service we received from the department of tourism to help us has just been like second to none it's been amazing and we'll talk about that in another but video but that was Elo Elo it was yeah fair. and so that's something that like we actually they must said have known we, we was the longos they was like right we better sort them boys out <laughs> better sort them guys out real quick so we'll we'll definitely like carry on because at the end of the day you're watching us in quarantine in the philippines and um you just saw a white wall it was a white wall now you can see a blue wall now i can cook i'm gonna try some cook some filipino food We're, we've got to go shopping um like we well, we'll keep we've got you food in we'll, we'll keep you entertained we've yeah. still got a lot of vlogs uh, travel vlogs as well but we're gonna while you guys are in quarantine we're gonna stick with you and just do dailies so that keeps you guys uh so we feel busy. connected so um going forward still together. going forward we're still gonna do the dailies starting again as of whenever now. this video goes up um and then once that is done i think we're gonna we're gonna try and help uh the tourists that are stranded as well so there'll be a couple of days where you'll see vlogs going up where we're trying to like make awareness for the, the other nationals mainly the uk because the uk sucks trying to get them to come over with uh planes to fly the british tourists back who want to go back uh, to england so um we're going to be busy for the next couple of weeks Probably even more than that. We'll just see how it goes, and then once all this blows over, we'll be returning back to the daily, uh, to the travel vlog. Sorry. Yeah, we've got um, a little backlog of travel vlogs which got interrupted. Um, the upload of them got interrupted when all of this um, coronavirus broke out and the city went into lockdown. Some good stuff, so by the way, guys. we've got some really good nice stuff. videos coming up, and once this is over, we will then we'll we'll go back to them and upload them. And by the time <laughs> them uploads are finished we should be on our way back to you because as soon as this coronavirus thing is is over and we're looking to come back we're like allowed back in the country asap so if they say if if the filipino government and the like if the flights come back and everything returns to normal everywhere then we could if that if that happened in may june then we'd be looking to come back in may june yeah or the next month after because like we've got our house we want to sort our house out sort that the was the purpose out. of our trip this year was our house and we haven't done that so either way we are as long as as long as the flights are all good and we can access the philippines because i think now no foreign tourists can enter mm -hmm. so once that's sorted we are going to be on the first flight back over um sorting out all the house stuff so you'll see the house again you'll see it finished you'll see us uh um, furnishing it Woo! Decorating, furnishing, cooking, living, just living normal, normal life. Um, so that's what's going to be happening going forward. Um, so yeah, we just wanted to let you know we haven't stopped. We haven't deserted you. Yeah, we're, like, we're still here. We just had to fly for two days straight, no sleep. So bear with us. As of now, we're back in the game. And uh, yeah, we'll just catch you guys in the next vlog. Um, don't know what we'll be doing it on, but you'll see tomorrow. So that's it. I think that's it. That's our update for the day. Might be a long update. 30 minutes. Wow. Yeah, sorry about that, wow. guys. But it's been, minutes. it's like 30 minutes to, to cram all of that 32 hours into 30 minutes. I think we've done well, to be honest, because it's been madness. But 
we are sorry that we've left you hanging for a couple of days and we know that a lot of people wanted us to stay in Iloilo because we're safer there and you're probably right we are and it wasn't that we didn't feel safe there the only reason we came back is because the UK are not going to let nationals back in if they were not in by mm. Sunday the 30th of March that's what we'd heard and we I'm hoping we can risk. put a bit of money back that we've spent so all the like the flight when it, um, Manila went into lockdown, everyone we well we panicked, panicked and just book, booked flights to Iloilo. That cost a lot, a lot more than it should have. Um, we've got like five flights outstanding, so we've, we've lost got a lot, lot of, money. of money to try. So and... the quicker we can get back into work and put that money back, the quicker we'll be back to the Philippines this year. Hopefully, it'll be a few months' time. Hopefully, but. Um, we won't be doing any wild travels. We'll make sure that your government and our government are both give the green light and we'll do it safe. We don't want to put anyone at risk, including ourselves, and we'll just have to go from there. But that is sorry, it. sorry for leaving you guys, <laughs> keeping you in the dark. But uh, we've only took a small trip back. Don't worry, only a small trip back. Yeah. So we'll catch you again in the next vlog. And as of now, we'll probably start attacking them comments because there must be loads. So. There is. Hope you guys are doing well and safe wherever you are. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Because we're going for a nap. A nap? No. I'm going to hibernate. <laughs> hibernate. Well, by nap, I meant like a 24-hour <laughs> nap. Because... So, that's it. Catch you tomorrow, guys. Peace.